All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, I think I want to continue with this lesson uh, where you hear these people in conversations that say, we was kings. Uh, but they have no idea about why they're not kings anymore. They have no idea uh, that they worshipped and accept Christ. And when they accepted Christ, uh, they turned their back on the Creator. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to see this a uh, few of this, a uh, little bit of this video again. Excuse me, from. Uh, medicine man um you guys know it's rare that i show a video uh twice but uh this this video is uh is huge you know um so many hidden things in this video so when we deal with the black germans right or the jemind jemind Okay, and it said, uh, so if you say, what is definition, um, the Jemind in Germany or Austria is the smallest administrative division of local government that have, uh, having corporate status and powers of self-government. Um, in that definition of a tribe, now I want you to think about what this image means. An image says a thousand words, right? Picture says a thousand words. Okay? This is a shield. A shield is a crest. This isn't a fighting shield. It's a crest. A crest shows a family. This family depicted seems to have black skin. When I type in this name right here, not knowing anything about German language, it directs me to this. The smallest administrative division of local government having corporate status and powers of what? Self-government. Do you understand what that's saying? To be able to govern itself. This is what tribes did. This is what kingdoms did. They overthrew these people. And to retain their memory. They made the tribal name their definition of sovereignty. If You've got to see what's going on here. You want to become a tribe, you have to self-identify and self-govern. That is sovereignty. They stole the sovereignty from these people. Killed them, banished them, whatever. But we see the image of these people retained in family crest. Here's the biggest thing that doesn't make sense. Why not get rid of the family crest? Like, eventually you can't make a family crest that bared your image. It's as if, it's as if they always wanted to savor that they took these things from you. And it says, Mehring. So, real quick, real quick, you know what we should do? We should go back and we should look at images. Now, here you have Geminist, whatever, when man, Geminist, you know, something. I have no idea what that means. But as you can see, they make jokes about it, right? Here you have a company using the name, right? Died Geminate. Now, Die doesn't mean the same thing it means here, but isn't it funny that they, that's put together? And we speak English, you know, so it kind of means, uh, you know, uh, something to us that it, that it probably doesn't usually mean. 
Okay, see, you type that shit in, right? And they show you some Christian shit, <laughs> right? Now, all these fucking kingdoms fell because of Christianity. Isn't it fitting that this is sitting right here on the page when we type that in? All right, so then you have companies using it, right? Now, if I type in the name American, that's what they called you. And then they stripped you of that title. And then they became the American. And then they enslaved you. And then when you were freed, if you wanted to be the American, you had to throw away your aboriginal titles. See how that works. Now you see American in, you see American uh uh, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, you see all kinds of companies with the name American in the title, right? You go to different areas, and you know the aboriginals live there, and they were called Chippewa, and then you have all these companies named Chippewa. You go to another area, and you see the Nazitat was there, and then they have fucking insurance agencies called Nazitat or whatever, you know? You, you go, no matter what the aboriginal's name is, you have these evil people pushing that they're a part of it somehow. Not a part of the eradication. Not a part of the genocide. No, in certain places you have them actually fucking pretending as if they are those people. Something's wrong with that. When... Talk. When Europeans call themselves Americans, there's something wrong with that. Now you're pretending you didn't conquer. You didn't come here as invaders with weapons. Now you're pretending you were invited and you just outlived us. And there's so much... So many lies within that. So it's 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 such a fraudulent act, the way they 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 they, they carry this out. So when you look at uh, Jaminid Mering, and you start to say, well, give me a definition there or something like that. Let's see if we can find a definition. All right. Translate this page since we got a, a stupid PDF. Okay. Is the municipality of the upper Bavarian district of allotting and a member of administrative community of Mittring or whatever. Now, here we see the same, what, coat of arms. It's a family crest of black people. Yet, here it sits in Germany. Yet, the Germans act like they've been there since day one. Uh, we named this motherfucker. What did Germans call this? The motherland. They're a fucking stranger to this place, and they call it the motherland. You can clearly see this in somebody else's family. They've overthrown somebody else's uh, family and cuckolded their shit. So, what we're more looking for is the people, right? Let's not play coy, Google. You know what I'm doing. And when we go here, these are the aborigines. Right? When I when I type in the people of this, this is what comes up. You need to understand what's going on. You are being globally eradicated. 
French family coat of arms. You understand what's going on? This is Germany, Prussia. Yet they claim it's a French family coat of arms. So, show me the German French people. Up. Oh. Italian family. Now, when I go looking for the French fucking black people, a goddamn Italian black face coat of arms come up. Still on a top. Ben, Be, excuse me, Beskencon, French family coat of arms. Well, there you go. And this is why French court say French people can't call themselves as a group French. French court, French court ruled that native white French do not exist. <laughs> see? You see what's going on? Now, let's take a moment and look at some, some Afro. Some Afro-French people scattered the four corners of the earth. All right, so Afro Europe uh, immigrated from Mississippi to, to France. African American who immigrated from Mississippi to France. So they, uh, uh, they got it, they got it. export. All right, uh, French people with foreign origin. So, same person, same person. All right. Here's for Afro-French people, they're not bound together by race as much as their family origin. If you're a black woman in Guadalupe, you might feel uh, a bigger something. In France, we have the idea that race doesn't exist. It's written in our constitution that we don't acknowledge race. So I think it's an excuse because if race doesn't exist, uh, then racism doesn't exist. Well, that's a good point. First off, if racism didn't exist, then why did you have to put it in your constitution? You know, um, yeah, that's obviously, you know, they, they're dealing with the same laws there that we deal with here. We just don't experience theirs uh, as much as they might experience ours through... Uh, uh, movies and things of that nature. I can't tell you the last black person I met that w went and watched a French movie. Period. Whether it's about black French people or white French people. If they got to put in their constitution no racism, then I don't think I'm going to see that many French movies with black people in it. Because that's the same thing that happened here. You see that shared history of being marginalized, pushed aside? Afro Europe, black French on the barricades against racism. All right, if there's no racism over there, why am I re why do I only find fucking I typed in Afro French and all they keep telling me about is goddamn racism. This is at the top. This is their top motherfucking concern. As an Afro person, being the aboriginal of these fucking parts or even being shipped in My problem is racism. So much so, it, I got to bring up, it's in the Constitution. 
So much so, I got to say, our Constitution, you know she ain't write that Constitution. You know the French Constitution probably don't do shit to protect her. You know if they follow procedure, they can shoot her ass down in broad daylight in front of fucking children. You know it, as long as they follow procedure, no problem has been made. And they won't serve time. You know they're your fucking oppressor here. And, and, and if you got money, you wouldn't, into, for a vacation, if you went there, you would ignorant, you'd be ignorant to do it. And you would experience the same racism they do. The same racism you, you experience here, just with a language that you don't quite understand. African France, right? Now, the black person is the aboriginal everywhere, right? And when we look at SF-181, it's okay, take your time. You're a computer. Do what you need. There you go. It's a glass of water for you, Mr. Computer. <laughs> Person having origins of the original peoples of this place, that place. All these black and African Americans, right? A person having origins in any of the racial groups. Why does it not say original peoples of Africa? Because the black uh, or the African or the African American uh, does not originate in Africa. It's been placed there. Hey, I got a great idea. If you're overthrowing black people and stealing their kingdoms, wouldn't it make a lot of sense to pick them up and place them somewhere where they can't interfere with you overthrowing their families? It'd be one thing to murder them off, but, you know, you got to do a lot of work to bury them. But you could chain them up, put them on a ship, and sell them to other people. Or abandon them in places. Now, think about these blacks in Africa. And how this little witchcraft form says that the blacks do not originate from Africa. They're just racial groups. They just exist there. That's what it's saying. Now again, the pen is mightier than the sword. Then it's these little paper things that they keep writing. That's the witchcraft. Now, want to see the real witchcraft in it? You know that the white man does not come from anywhere in Europe. He invaded Europe. Now, they sit there and say, you're white if you're a person having origins in any of the original peoples of Europe. The original peoples of Europe are aboriginal. There is a class, a contrast of forefathers, phenotypes, skin colors. When you look at the original peoples of Europe and you look at the white people that live there now. So. I clearly have to ask you, even though this paper is to jump through one of their hoops, is not the paper false? The white man comes from a place that is not Europe, yet he overthrew those people and continued to move throughout the world in his colonization process to continue to overthrow people and replace them. The talented Mr. Ripley. Okay. So, let's go back to this. You know, this this one, it, 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 tru it truly, I mean, you see, we, we've already talked about it for almost 20 minutes. I mean, it's a, this is a big mind fuck. You know, um, uh, when, 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 when Marcus says hijack, he, he's not fucking lying, man. 
I mean, these are straight highwaymen, highway robbers. You know, they travel down the highway and, and, and anything they come across. A caravan, they hijack it. A home with a family, they hijack it. Pregnant women, hijack them. Landowners, hijack them. And here's the unique thing. One of these motherfuckers of this group always stays with what they just stole. While the group continues to move on until one day, they're all neighbors. So you can't sit there and say white people all come from Prussia. Because here's Duke. This is the Edomite of Prussia. Duke. Genesis 36. Duke, 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 Duke of Prussia. Right? Check it out. Prior to this, all these aboriginal races. This is still... This is a person of the aboriginal races. The kingdom that they built up, Prussia, was overthrown by caucus people, by, 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 by pale people. Uh, try, uh, try, uh, uh, assigning any name to them right now, you know, other than what... what Right now, they seem to be the Scathians, uh, 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 proving that the Scathians and Hagarines are, are, are a branch of the bloodline. Uh, it wouldn't be too hard, but I, I believe these are the Scathians. The, the, you know, um, um, but, but we'd have to we'd have to study uh, harder to to find the root of these people. Okay. But again, in, in, you know, they're, they're, I believe, as I've stated for a long time now, that their, for, their forefathers were murdered off and then, and then something replaced them and bred with their mother. Because this isn't only my theory. It's what's written in the Bible. My theory is about which particular people in which monster did it. Whom is their father? The Bible always already tells us it's 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 Lucifer. The father lies, and when they see what Lucifer looks like, they'll be shocked. They'll say, "This is what overtook the world." <laughs> Another man from Prussia. Here you have what? Edith and Otto, Holy Roman Emperor, married in 900. In 900, you still have black people ruling the Roman Empire. And then you have the Duke of, Duke of Saxe, Altenburg, Johann Philip Frederick VIII, Johann Willem the fourth, uh, Frederick Willem, uh, 16 something. So in the 1600s, you still had these black people and their kingdom. I believe Sax is Germany, I'm not sure. Now here's the princess of Denmark and duchess of Prussia. All right, so right here for you to see. 1504 to 1547, she was a daughter of King Frederick of Denmark and Anne of Brandenburg. She married Duke Albert of Prussia. This guy, this cat we saw right here. That's her husband. Now, she's the princess of Denmark. She's a Danite and Duchess of Prussia. She Dutch Duke Duchess. She married into Prussia. So he is Edom and she is Dan. He carried the title Duke. Her marriage, her princess marriage to him made her a duchess.
Duchess of Prussia, Marie Anne. Now here we have Archbishop of Munich. I believe Munich is Germany. And it's just his coat of arms. All right. Now you can see he's completely got his Roman robe on in this uh, coat of arms. Got pearls in his ears. Frederick, Friedrich. So we, they're named Friedrich. That was the black name. Now I got a grandfather named Fred. Now it's been changed to Fred, Frederick. Here you have a statue of a black Moor holding a coat of arms. Uh, we could play that again. I'll show you what coat of arms. Uh, Hassen, Hassenberg or something. Let's look again. Habs, Habsburg coat of arms. Got the cross right there. Got the cross right there. This is why these people fell. Now you see he's got a chin strap beard. It's crazy. You got a little German boy with dark skin. Right here, it's 36. The Black Knight of the Holy Roman Empire of Germany. Black Germans, Black Rome. Uh, these letters are just too small for me. But again, there's the word German, all right? And there's the acceptance of Christianity. And you know today, there's, I, I don't think there's any black people in Germany after the Holocaust. <laughs> I know there were black soldiers in the army. Here again, uh, young man wears the crown of, of a nobleman and carries the red end white military something and shield of the holy roman empire so these are black romans do, do you understand that i'm going to ask you again these are ancient pictures they are considered facts today as a fact that is a black roman when I say Rome is Edom, when we go to let's see, uh, Jewish Encyclopedia. We're going to go in here and we're going to go look up Edom. But Edom isn't Edom in here. It's E. Dox. E D O X. Let's, just, let's see if it's on page two. E C E D E Dox. Idumia. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. Six, mm, that's more like a set, seven, seven, eight. Okay, so that's one, so seven, eight, nine paragraphs down. Use of name. Now, the name Edom is used by the Talmudist for the Roman Empire. Okay, so all the people in the background doing all the magic, setting up all the fucking Freemasons, Talmudists, right? When they talk about the Roman Empire, they call it Edom. Period. End of story. Wait, there's more. Oh, the story continues. Oh, okay. Anti-Fin, right? Um, and they applied Rome to every passage of the Bible referring to Edom. So 
when you're reading the Bible and you're supposed to be saying Edom, when you're supposed to be seeing the the word Edom, they wrote Roman in there. So the book of Romans is the book of Edom in the New Testament. You understand what's going on? I'll read it to you. They applied to Rome every passage of the Bible referring to Edom and Esau. So again, when you're supposed to be reading Edom or Esau, they wrote Rome. When you look at these pictures, that's the fucking Roman. When you look at the guy behind, that's the fucking Roman. Rome fell to these white people. When you go back, that's the German. Rome in 1200 is in Germany. Excuse me, the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church. So Rome is in Germany. St. Maurice between St. Anthony and James the Greater. Right? Is that their biblical belief of James and they hide that picture? St. Maurice. Right? Or St. Anthony. And here's St. Maurice. All their saints is dark skin. Why? Because it's not their saints. These are the quote-unquote saints that the people, the original people had. These aboriginal people that grew into these kingdoms that were overthrown. So here you have German altarpiece. So you have to look at this. Here you have the German, the, the, the black German marrying the white lady, right? Now, when we look at Cambodia, uh, isn't that the same uh, situation? The king of Cambodia marries the pale Chinese and then an ambush occurs during the marriage? No. Kind of seems like a military conquest. So let's go to this part. History of Europe. Approximately 400 AD, a group of Europeans coming from the northern part of Europe, which you call Scandinavia, Sweden, Denmark, Norway, Finland, and what you call Russian so that's what happened to all these characters back here. All these statues of black people, they were overthrown. They came down and they smashed the what? The Holy Roman Empire. And what you call Russia and Denmark. They came down in a series of invasions starting in 400 AD and they smashed the Roman Empire. Now again, the invasions, the invasions that happened prior to this is how they won those cities of uh, Scandinavia. We see the Danites. We see what their image looks like. It is not of the European. So those places at this point in time, they had won. Those black kingdoms had been overthrown at that point. These people set up shop in each of these kingdoms, keep a correspondence, and then what? They merge an invasion party. Is that not what happened in the Americas? Is it history repeating itself? No, it's a military technique. It's a military campaign. 
It is the same thing that these people do to other countries today. They do not take them head on. They say they are the mightiest government in the world. They do not take small governments head on. They destabilize their infrastructure so the people can't eat, the people can't sleep, the people can't shit. And they blow up civilians just to put fear in the rest of the population. It is the same barbaric military campaign that has been going on to overthrow these kingdoms since 400 AD. The new fighting style. They came down in a series of invasions starting in 400 AD and they smashed the Roman Empire. Now, <clears throat> he said they're primarily what? Romans and Catholics. That's the same fucking thing. Now, thank you. You remember, the Romans enslaved the Israelites. The Romans are Edom. Edom enslaved his brother. And then, years later, they're overthrown by the barbarians, which they now call Germanic tribes. But they can't be Germanic tribes because the fucking Romans are the goddamn Germanic people. The Holy Roman Emperor of, uh, Empire of Germany. It's not until the overthrow that what? The empire moves to Italy. This guy on screen, this guy on screen kind of looks like me. I used to have the viewpoint. I still have the viewpoint. It's just. See, he's got a viewpoint in his forehead and he's got a viewpoint in his chin. I just don't have that. It looks like he has a, he could have a temple under there. But that, that I share those images, those, those features. survive as the Irish, the Scottish, the Welsh. So those Germans invaded into the, what you call England. Okay, so here we have written on screen, Euphorius claimed that these uh, Celts were blacks or Ethiopians. The Celts continue to be recognized as blacks by Tactus, who wrote about the black Celts in Pix in 8080. So still, here we have the research that this man has done is, 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 is really good. It's just that it's almost not far back enough because, you know, if he understood that the Celts that he's talking about are, are black until they're, uh, until they're overthrown, um, the Irish that he's talking about um, are black until they're overthrown. It's the people that overthrew those aboriginal populations that grew into kingdoms uh, uh, that started to spread out and overthrow other places with their new uh, found wealth and authority. So let's look at this again because uh, in another video, uh, in another video, Medicine Man covers the Black Celt. I believe it's another video. Europeans were presently there, which were primarily Romans and Celts. So, an ancient African civilization in Ireland and Britain. Now, do you see what's going on? Um, the people that call themselves Irish and British today, uh, they write this book. Okay? 
an ancient civilization, an ancient African civilization. Again, we go to the SF-181. I'm sure every European country has the same fucking form, all claiming that you're fucking Africans. But when you go to each of these forms, I bet they're all going to show the same thing that the, the people in Africa do not are not the original peoples there. And that's very important. If you tell all these black people around the world that they're Africans, yet there's no evidence they originate there, then you're lying to them and there is a underlying agenda. Now, when you consider that these aboriginal people uh, are from different kingdoms and you're trying to keep them from ever trying to reclaim their kingdom and then it's important to say that you came from some fucking where else that is the same thing that is happening here in the united states in the continuous theft and breakdown of your land and its resources Those Europeans you call Germanic people, one, three sets of these German people would go into what is now England and Great Britain. England and Great Britain was previously occupied by a group of Europeans called Celtic, who are now survived as the Irish, the Scottish, the Welsh. So those Germans invaded into what you call England. The three groups that invaded the German and Jews. Now he said, Anglos, Saxons, and Jews. <clears throat> now, here we have Et Sapien Ter, uh, Ad, Ad, Pre, Preal, Prilvim. <clears throat> now, if you check the last video, one of the viewers, uh, I believe, attempted to translate it or actually translated it because I have, uh, I'm just way too lazy to uh, go and look for it. Um, but the translation it doesn't seem to really say what these say. Um, when you look at the word et and sapien um, and tear, uh, those those words are used today modernly. I I, uh, I understand that there could be a translation to another language and that they could mean something uh, 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 greatly different. You know, and, and and I'd have to respect that, but I'd have to say uh, uh, how it's written on screen right now is. Is, is terrifying. When we're in the last days and we already know that these people that invaded Europe walk around and call themselves European, that their male seed is infected with the clonefish DNA. Then you'd have to say, why does the Bible say only by the father's seed? Why does the European say we go by our mother's seed? It all fucking lines up. This is why some, he says, kill the men, the women, and the children. And in other scriptures, he said, kill the men and take the women and the children and the goods. Some, he said, burn everything. Some, he said, you can have the booty. The booty meaning the women and the riches and the animals. So, and if you think anything that I'm saying is false, again, I, I always encourage you strongly to read for yourself and you will read these different situations and different acts as they come up in the scripture so that you understand what you're seeing on TV and in music because these things are being used against you.
and you don't really know it because you're ignorant to your own source material. They will come and invade what you call England and exterminate the, the Irish or the Celts. Okay, so listen to this again. They will come and invade what you call England and exterminate the, the Irish or the Celts. So he just kind of slipped up. If you listen to how he says it, he said they came into England and, and exterminated the African or the Celts. Okay, so. Again, this is another Afrocentric person, which that's fine. But then he let it slip that the Celts were black. You know, earlier when he brings up the Celts, he doesn't say that they're black. Now he says the Africans or the Celts. He, he you know, almost like, oops, I mean Celts. They will come and invade what you call England and exterminate the, the Irish or the Celts. So... Here, what you have is the image of them, what, coming in to England, right? And here you have, what, we've been taught these are Hebrews, these could be Hebrews, or these could be Celts. Um, but uh, obviously, this image isn't associated with this man's lecture as being placed in. But, you know, either way, you can see what's going on. It is an extermination. Or diaspora because when people see their line of defense has been killed or run off they know it's that the, the same thing is going to happen to them if they stay there they will be killed or ran off because again from history we can see that this is about taking land and territory uh, especially where the violence is happening They will come and invade what you call England and exterminate the, the Irish or the Celts. So, uh, again, I know this picture has words down here. It says King of Argon and uh, Navarre, son of Sancho and uh, the fifth, Sancho fifth by uh, the first, excuse me, Sancho the fifth by first wife Isabella of Urgell. Now, again, I don't see, I guess I don't see the wife. This person is wearing armor, so this is most likely the king. And you can see that there's a head, there's a head, there's a head. There's a head. Each of those heads are wearing a crown. Each of those crown matches this crown. So if they're all wearing, uh, are those stars? Those look like they're stars. If they're all wearing the same kind of crown. It's usually so uh, some kind of uh, unity. Uh, so this seems like some form of act of betrayal. Again. Well, right there in the center of the shield, you have uh, the Roman cross. Now, again, when you look at this, these are black people wearing these crowns, and they are headless. I mean, uh, their, their bodies aren't there, so they're beheaded. And you can see the soldiers are all white. Uh, yesterday, at first, we couldn't tell until we looked back here at these uh, people. So it seems that King Argon... Uh, or is that Peter? Is that Peter, one Peter the first, sixteen hundred. Now, that's a coin toss if that's a white person or a, a black person. But when you see the darkness of these, uh, it pretty much shows uh, in the lightness of these, it pretty much shows that it's a white person. So this race war started uh, well before we were born. Well before we were born. We were just born into it. Uh, sacramentary of King uh, of Henry the Second. 
Okay, so here's Henry II. You can see they paint or portray him as a dark person. You see these little spikes off his beard as if, as if he's got his uh, hair is tied off there. And uh, in his hand, they depict him holding a Holy Roman cross, right? And that's why you don't see any pictures of black Henry II anymore. Now you can see uh, in this picture, these, uh, these uh, things are twice the size of these uh, black people. So there's a very interesting uh, depiction in this uh, painting. So you have to ask yourself, are these images of the Crusades? As they go around to different kingdoms and um, overthrow dark-skinned people. <coughs> Each picture depicts a different culture of dark-skinned people fighting men in iron. I need you to think about this for a second. <coughs> Columbus came here in iron. Cortez. You type in Hernandez Cortez, you're going to see him dressed in iron. Ages of exploration. Now, this is in his chill mode. In fucking iron. Right? Do you see all the iron he's wearing on his fucking shoulders? He's like, he's like a, a fucking robot back in the past. <laughs> like, this, in a rainy day, this mother... Yeah, you know, the uh, name of the ship which Hernando Cortez sailed, right? Now, remember what we learned about the peacock, and look how Cortez is pictured. There's a black Indian right there, and right there. Can you believe this shit? It's sitting in front of us the whole time, like I told you. What else you got here, man? We see in, in all these images, he's wearing armor. Armor is a military campaign. This has always been a military campaign. Us dying is the crusade. I mean, it's 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 obvious to me right now. And when these Englishmen come to America, the name of these people will change to America. So the point that I'm going to point out to you, and you see this scheme, that Americans are Englishmen. Englishmen are Germans. They're Jews, Angles, and Saxons, no different than Hitler. So let's clear in your mind about who these Europeans are you call an American. They come from Germany. We went into France, two German groups, the Burgundians and France. They exterminated most of the Celts there and what Africans were there, and they are now called Frenchmen. 
So Frenchmen are Germans. Another group, two groups went into northern Italy and northern Spain. They are called the Visigoths and Vandals. Those white English, the white Spanish, and the white Italian, the white from Yugoslavia, they're German. Another group of Germans will move to the West. That group is called the Rus. They will comprise your white Russians, your Boris Yeltsin. So let's get a, a, a frame of reference historically clear that those Europeans who now you recognize as Englishmen, Americans, Germans, French, Spanish, Italian, Russian, they're all Germans. Racially, they are the same. There's no distinction. So don't mix them up about one of your colonizers is better than the other. Okay. It is these Germans, when they were able to occupy and conquer and control all of Europe, when they were able to kill off the Celts, push the Moors out, push the Arabs out from Yugoslavia, and push the Turks out, and they finally got control of Europe in its entirety. They killed each other from that point. Now, this, I don't think this is depicting them fighting each other because this looks like a human. And this looks like a manimal. I mean, it, it's. All right, see. You. So, here you have a war depicting them fighting themselves. The blues versus the reds. So, You've got to understand what these pictures mean and the pride that they take in exterminating themselves when they don't have anybody else to kill. You've got to understand that these are men in the military and they're all sent out with the desire to kill. Now, the the no, don't make it seem as like I'm saying there aren't wars within black communities of the ancient combatants <laughs> um this is what we read a lot in the bible so again hitler has this belief of races intermixed should be exterminated and he says that the the pure race of the Aryan is blonde hair blue eyes yet we can clearly see that he has dark haired phenotypes so under his own rules he uh, would not pass his own tests that uh, of the theories that he that he pushes. What was the wars that these European, these German tribes fought? We go back 1600, the 30 year war, 100 year war, the Napoleonic Wars in 1800. It was England, France, Russia, and Germany, all cousins fighting each other. That Napoleonic War. I, I, I'm, I, See how loud the music is. It's it's I'm, I'm it's hard to concentrate. England, France, Russia, and Germany, all cousins fighting each other. That Napoleonic War they blamed on Napoleon was a pan-European war. These Germans fighting among themselves. You go on to the Franco-Prussian War. So all of last century from 1800 to 1900 was one series of a war in Europe. From one end of Europe to the other, they killing each other. They continued this intra-ethnic war at World War I. Again, the same group, England, France, Germany, Russia, and they added their cousins in Yugoslavia. 
Yugoslavia as a pan-European, pan-German war. They had a little break, they went out and did it. World War II. <laughs> a pan-European war. Germans fighting Germans. It is, it is that war that they had that made it possible for all people to begin to get independent. Remember, England, Spain, Portugal, England, France, and Germany, and U.S., they had colonies. Each of these countries can hold its colonies under its own structure. But because of the Napoleonic Wars, those wars in 1800, followed by World War I and II, that none of these European countries could hold on to their colonial structure by themselves. So after World War II, they had to collectivize. They had to sit down together and say, no, we, we, we destroyed each other, we made each other for one. And we can't hold on to our colonial structure. We must collectivize our energy as white Germans to continue to control the world. In 1945, those European Germans called Americans, English, and French primarily. Now think about that. Um, all these colonies have blacks on them. Now, they talked a few of the Aborigine peoples into fighting their sides of the war. But if they kept sending in men against themselves, eventually uh, there'd be not enough men to control uh, the people that they've enslaved in these different colonial powers. That's, that's the real deal. By these wars, they thin themselves out, and then the ones that have no intent uh, on war at all, the ones that are collecting the finance from the wars, start to think, well, what about the management of slaves? The people we stole these countries from. Later added on by the Germans would sit down and say, look, we have to devise a military unit among us Germans to dominate these people of color. So they born NATO. North Atlantic Treaty Organization is an organization of Western European countries band together against the Africans, the Asians, etc., because they no longer individually could hold a colonial base. They needed a political structure in which they would collectively try to control you, so they formulated the UN. Now they need an international loan shark money scheme to get you. IMF, World Bank. Bretton Wood, 1945, America's now becoming a dominant country because the Africans are, are colonized, the Asians are colonized, and Europe is devastated. So the United States is calling the shots. So in 1944, the United States Germans will call a conference called Bretton Wood in New Hampshire, and they will set up these three organizations. And what I want to do is to read from, for you briefly this is from Al Gore, who is a, uh, a, a European environmentalist. And listen to what they're talking about, the Marshall Plan. Immediately after World War II, this is Gore speaking, history, Europe was so completely devastated. I'm quoting from Al Gore's book on the Global Marshall Plan as they review the Marshall Plan. You know what the Marshall Plan is, right? when America will try to help its European cousins. Immediately after World War II, Europe was so completely devastated. Well, you know during World War II, they killed off about 75 million of their own people. They devastated the whole country. That's not including the 25 million that they killed of themselves in World War I. So between World War I and World War II, they killed 100 million of themselves. Add on to that, another 20 million that they kill of each other in the wars in 1800. And it was so bad in Europe that around 1850, that's when you got your mass migration of white people out of Europe to come to the Caribbean, to Central and South America and America. That's where you get your mass migration. So when you look at 
the killing of 125 million of the old people within a hundred year period and the mass migration you wonder if you understand why. Okay, so, you know, a lot of things just flash back there. Uh, I think one of the most interesting ones is this one, when you see uh, Charlemagne. Um, and, uh, you know, these Freemasons say that they are, uh, the, uh, you know, bloodline of Charlemagne, and, you know, Charlemagne's black. So, when, when you see this image that they hide from you, uh, King of the Franks from 700, Emperor of the Romans to 800, and you know um, that they over the barbarians overthrew those people, and they're pretending, and then you know that their blood don't go back to Charlemagne. They're just making that shit up because it's about what they claimed. See, this is all about claim. Remember when? The biker shoots the, the rabbit, and he makes the kill. But the other guy yells claim, and they got to split it. See how even though he didn't have any act of hunting that rabbit, he still got a piece of it because what he witnessed. That's it's really be, what's being said right there. Now, it, it really doesn't have too much to actually do with shouting claim. Is so much as to what they witnessed. Now, when you know uh, the barbarian next to you is the name's Gluck, and you and Gluck ran up on somebody and, and fucking Gluck uh, saved your life and and, 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 and and killed the guy. You know the guy better do, but 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 Gluck is the one that, that kills him. And his possessions to a great deal is Gluck, uh, 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 is Gluck's, right? But you're still going to get a piece of that because what you witnessed. So when they take down these kingdoms, they formulate the, their, their own parties into those kingdoms based on their military hierarchy that already existed. You know, you've got to understand when you go to a nation of people and you're a missionary and you preach peace and they accept, at some point, you're sending military in there to overthrow them. If somebody knocked on your door and they said, hi, I'm here as a Christian to talk about our God. And you would probably say, Hmm, some things are going on in my life. Maybe I need this. You invite them in. You have just let your guard down. It doesn't matter which religion that they were saying that they were using. The acts that happen in history are depicted through these portraits. These portraits show these black people that are ruling these kingdoms holding up their Emmy Award Christ trophy or item. That is what most of these pictures depict. Whether it's written all over their shield with pride, whether it's sitting in their hand. 
it all shows that they betrayed the creator which they took that oath to god makes kings jesus makes slaves and you've got to see what's really going on all right uh we got messages uh, sister warrior says uh just in case it doesn't stay up long, here's a video uh, art presentation I made. Enjoy. Now, I have no idea what's here. Let's let's watch. We'll live for 
whoa, 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 whoa. What the fuck is going on? Why do they have his motherfucking pants down? What the fuck? Hey, look, look, it's it's one thing to fucking try to hang somebody. It's another thing to fucking pull their fucking pants down while you're doing it. Uh, that's some... That's some weird shit. And then... Somebody takes a goddamn picture? comments um that that was that was that was, that was, that was splendid um that, that is weird shit uh though with the pants down shit i, I, don't, I don't get that shit that's, that's creepy so uh one of the viewers uh sent us this uh and uh it's called indians now remember um, you're dealing with uh, tribal peoples that are uh, classified uh, as Afro-Asian. Um, you know, I've, I've been telling you this for a reason. Now you can see uh, from the camera lighting and all that shit. This is probably from the uh, 80s, you know, maybe even the 90s, but. Out of trouble here, aren't we? Uh, just stay calm. Let me do the talking. from Utah. Utah. Ah! Utah. Ah. Could you tell me what tribe this is? Hmm. We are Indians. Yes, I see that, but what Indians? You don't think we are Indians? No, 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 I just, uh... We have peepees. <laughs> right, I see, but... Look at all these peepees we have. Because we are Indians. <laughs> they have teepees. Where is your destination? Breckenridge. It's a small town east of here. I know. There are lots of gold. That's not? Yeah, that's the place. I'm afraid. There is terrible storm in the mountain. So, if you like, you may wait here with us and other animals for storm. <laughs> uh so you know um all right thanks for that viewer that uh, said that uh it's kind of interesting you know you have two things going on all right you have two things going on 
uh, one, you have Indians um, that are uh, dealing with martial arts uh, and martial art training. Uh, two, um, you have uh, an, an, an Indian chief that's Asian saying, you know, we're Indian, uh, right? Don't we look like it? Because he rubs his face. Like, don't we look like it? And we have teepees. So it's almost like the Asian guy uh, stole the identity. And when the Mormons come across him, he's, he's, he's trying to convince them that he's Indians. Remember, he says, what Indian tribe are you? Uh, you don't think we're Indians, <laughs> right? So, you know, that's the second thing that's actually going on there. You know, uh, identity theft and the theft of the identity that they stole was a people that practiced martial arts. You know, so um, you, you got it. You got to see what it's really saying. Uh, we have another one. And uh, uh, the video we did yesterday, the young man that uh, we, uh, we, were, we were talking, uh, uh, dealing with comments with, uh, he sent this uh, to show us uh, a commercial about what he was saying. Uh, left a message, ask your wife if this video uh, 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 brings back any memories. So I think this might be from uh, the 80s as well. What's he saying, Father? Uh, Commandant Cartier, he's saying uh, this nation's name is Canada. Canada. <laughs> uh, Canada. Uh, beg, beg pardon, sir, but the word he used, I think it really means those houses down no, there. No, no, believe me. I <laughs> Nation and Canada is its name. Wakion, Canada Con. But I'm sure it means the houses, the village. <laughs> oh. oh yeah. Yeah, okay, so they so they used to play that all the time. Uh the commercials. Okay, so I think this is uh you know, this has to do with his comment yesterday that he stated uh, uh, that the uh, heritage of what the Micmac state that uh, when the Canadians came, the, 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 this is depicting that. You know, and I think uh, the uh, the tran the second translator, you know, when he keeps trying to tell the old bastard, no, the village, you know. Um, I, I think I think that's hilarious. Uh, you know, I, 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 you know, that's great. You know? And you know, uh, they they you know, it's funny how they 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 mock their own history about how they fuck up on the name, but they don't really talk about how you know what they've done to the people. You know, their 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 highlight is you know a, a miscommunicated a miscommunication. Uh, with within translation, uh, not uh, violence, theft, and you know, you know how this song and dance goes. So again, it's come to the village and we talk is what he's what they're telling you on screen that it, it translates to. What's he saying, Father? Uh, Commander Cartier, he's saying uh, this nation's name is uh, Canada. Canada. <laughs> Canada. Uh, beg, beg pardon, sir, but the word he used, I think it really means those houses down no, there. No, no, believe me, I know the word. It means nation, and Canada is its name. Wakion, 
Canard a con. But I'm sure it means the houses, the village. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> three more times, and that shit would be annoying to see. Oh, yeah, but that that, that is that's funny. Um, now uh, there's a uh, there's a couple of videos I want you to see now. Um, because there's 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 a there's an importance that's going on here. Um, and and let's look at this real quick. It should come as no surprise that New York City is a melting pot with several races and cultures. But there's one ethnic mix in particular that truly shows you how you should never judge a book by its cover. Meet Michael Jung, a second generation Korean raised since infancy in the Dominican Republic. I was born in New York, right here. It's just that my family emigrated to the Dominican Republic for work. I could say I was born and raised there because I really act like a Latino over there. But And how do you act like a Latino over there? Like, very outgoing. When I speak, I always use my hands. A lot of Koreans, I don't think they really use their hands. <laughs> like, let alone, like, speak fast or a lot. <laughs> a lot of Koreans that I've met, they're reserved. Like, when they speak, they're, like, straight on to the point. Mm -hmm. Michael, who's fluent in English, Spanish, and Korean, is 100% connected to his adoptive country. Yo me identifico más con los dominicanos. Mm -hmm. Solo que mis visuales solo son coreanos. Although Michael currently lives in New York, as many Latin Asians do, his family represents the millions of people who have created a formidable Asian diaspora in Latin America, a trend with historical roots that dates back to the 16th century. There's an uninterrupted relationship between Asia and the um, and Americas, particularly uh, Mexico and Peru. You know, both Mexico and Peru had ports that had this yearly trade with China through the Philippines, trade with China, India. That was uninterrupted between 1565 and 1815. The Manila Galleon trade were Spanish trading ships that sailed the Pacific Ocean for over 200 years between Spain, Acapulco, and Manila. Filipinos who were on these voyages were the first Latin Asians in the Americas and were followed in the 19th century by Indian and Chinese laborers who were brought to the Americas as part of the coolie trade. African slaves were the most important labor force in tropical production. In the Caribbean, in coastal Peru, so there were debates, you know, who was going to replace the slaves. And they thought in Indian indentured workers and Chinese indentured workers. So, okay. <laughs> okay. <coughs> now, first off, we already understand the slaves were the aborigines. Now, um, here's the thing that, uh, that that's kind of funny. Why would you need to replace them now you need to think about that if they had all these fucking slaves where'd they all go hmm now let's go back over here and i'll give you a hint if you check the black or african-american is a person having origins in any of the black racial groups of Africa, but that does not mean that they are the original peoples of Africa. So, what happened to all the people that they overthrew in Europe? What happened to all the people that they overthrew in, 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 in South America? What is Trump trying to do to you when you can, when you have the status of black or African American here in America? Ship your ass as racial groups to Africa. Now do you see the bigger picture? And what do these people say? Well, I was born here, but it's my adoptive nation now, right? So a large number of them are going to arrive to coastal plantations in Peru and Cuba. There was a huge Chinese population in Cuba. 
they first came over as laborers and then they opened their own businesses and started their own community there. Maria Lau, a New Jersey born and bred fine art and documentary photographer of Latin Asian descent, documented her Chinese Cuban ancestry in the multimedia series 71. I never thought that 71 was going to be what it became because it really just started with the intention of finding my aunts and fulfilling this this wish for for my grandfather for my family so it became my mission to find them and it was going to be very difficult because their names would change you know when they get married uh, just to trace things back from cuba to china it took years and i was able to bring them all together and it was a once in a lifetime encounter that you can replicate Asians also migrated to Peru, which has the largest Asian population of any Latin American country. If you grew up in Peru, chances are somebody in your family is of Chinese descent. It's, it's like in there, in our blood. Fabiana Chu, who currently lives in New York, is a fourth generation Chinese Peruvian born and raised in Lima. But never really had to, in Peru, explain what it was like to be Chinese Peruvian. I was never asked, when are you going back to China? I was never asked, uh, are you really from here? Never, never. So look at how she equates her living where she feels that she, she maybe shouldn't belong, but she feels just fine. Look at how she is equating that with how people treat dark-skinned people. Is a fourth-generation Chinese Peruvian born and raised in Lima. But never really had to, in Peru, explain what it was like to be Chinese Peruvian. I was never asked, when are you going back to China? I was never asked, when are you going back to Africa? I was never asked, uh, are you really from here? Ne uh, uh, when, when, when you go and you go to some beautiful island and every all these wild birds and all this shit and then you see black people and in your in your in, in your in your companion says those are the aboriginals of the island right now think of what she just said explain what it was like to be chinese peruvian i was never asked when are you going back to china i was never asked uh, are you really from here? Never, never. There was This place is so wonderful. Is that really from here? Now I want you to think about that because this is how it's like in Mexico. They write in their own pu uh, uh, publications. Black people are told to stay off the street between, uh, I mean, uh, stay out of uh, the gardens of the hotels uh, that they work in between particular times because them being that brings down the beauty of the garden. This is the mentality of the people that have come here and taken this land from you, taking your livelihood, taking, taking your ancestors' futures. Imagine if Columbus never arrived, your future would be completely different. Your challenges to reach heaven would be completely different. But this is the hand that we're all dealt, right? And we're all just told to go along with it. And this is why no one ever stands up. And no one ever rises. This is Babylon, baby. I ain't the way things are done here. That was never a question that I that I was a Peruvian in Peru. But my race played a role in how they how people related to me. I wish it hadn't. In Peru, as in many Latin American countries, whether you're Korean, Japanese, or from any other Asian background, you are almost always referred to as Chinese or Chino, China, Chinita. So that always made me uncomfortable. People will choose to refer to you as 
what you look like or what they think you look like. And, and, I, and I was always very uncomfortable with that. That discomfort, however, never overshadowed Fabiano's cultural pride. And then, of course, in Peru, we were being Peruvian 24-7, you know, enjoying the food, being with our friends, visiting Machu Picchu, being proud of where we're from. Now, being proud of where they're from. Now, think about that. At one point, England was glorious, and then it was overthrown. And then that rule destroyed the land, and these people f f left the sinking ship. Something happened to the Chinese, and they did the same thing. Something happens over there that they always want to scatter away from their own people. And them fleeing opens up these evil people that they ran from coming to new communities and hiding amongst them. That's the same way bacteria spread or a virus spreads. And I, and I was always very uncomfortable with that. That discomfort, however, never overshadowed Fabiano's cultural pride. And then, of course, in Peru, we were being Peruvian 24-7, you know. Okay, she's already understood that she's not a Peruvian. This is the same thing as your average European living here in America calling themselves an American. This is my title now. I've taken it. Enjoying the food, being with our friends, visiting Machu Picchu. Enjoying the promised land, enjoying the resources of it until it's diminished. Because every night while you're sleeping, those locusts are out there traveling, delivering goods, Building, scheming, selling resources. All these forests, all these loggers make this money. All these oil fields from Texas on up to Wyoming. You still think we get oil from, from the Middle East. Yet you drive anywhere in Texas, you see a fucking rig pumping nonstop. Being proud of where we're from. That it's 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 conquered land, and they're proud of where they're from. But you are marginalized. So much so that you are denied through ed, through miseducation to know that this was even your land. This is the biggest. This is the mystery schools. And you've got to jump through hoops to find it. And while you're oppressed, you're sitting there hating the land. Yet connected to it. The Latin Asian mix is also celebrated through food, where dual heritage is served on a platter. I'm very proud to, to be both Peruvian because I'm, I'm first Peruvian. I was born in Peru. And then I have the Asian culture, so I mean, I'm very proud of both. Uh, so do you see how backwards he talks? His forefathers are Asian, but he's born on Peru soil, so he's a Peruvian. Asian blood coursing through his body, but he's born in Peru, so he's a Peruvian. Now, that, 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 uh, I, I, I live on a street. I'm going to make up a street name. I live on, I live on Howell Avenue. Okay? 
So if somebody says, what are you? Meaning, you know, people wise, you're not going to say, I'm a how avin. <laughs> right? You're going to tell them what people group you're associated with. See, listen again. The Latin Asian mix is also celebrated through food, where dual heritage is served on a platter. I'm very proud to, to be both Peruvian because I'm, I'm first Peruvian. I was born in Peru. And then I have the Asian culture, so, I mean, I'm... So, see, again, that, that, that doesn't even make sense. The, the, the Japanese is coursing into your blood, but because you're born in Peru, you're Peruvian. Now, if your parents, if one's Japanese and the other is Peruvian, you know, I could understand. But other than that, you know, it's, it's pretty backwards. I'm very proud of both. Eduardo Oshiro is the Japanese Peruvian owner of Aquario Restaurant in Portchester, where his native culinary traditions are not another passing food trend. In fact, the staples of Peruvian cuisine have deeply rooted Chinese and Japanese influences. I think we're doing a good job by providing all culture to others. They're just about in every place there's, there's, um, there's Asian, culture, Asian influence into it. The ceviches was already there in Peru, but it had a lot of Japanese culture mixed in. The fried rice, that's where you get the, the Chinese side. So that you got the Chinese and then the, the, the Japanese would be the tiraizo. And then your traditional would be the yuca la huancaina. As Peruvians and, and in our food, we can offer a lot, you know, for a lot of people that never tasted our food. Whether it's through food, art, or just living life, Latin Asians are clearly a diverse group of people with different stories to tell who share a common thread that defies perceptions of race and ethnicity. Soy peruana. Yo soy coreano, pero soy dominicano. Soy peruano con descendencia japonesa. Yo soy china cubana. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, there are almost half a million Asian Latinos living in the United States, mostly concentrated in New York, Texas, and California. For Asian American Life, I'm Tina Beth Pina. So that's uh, something to uh, think about. Um, and then we have another Medicine Man video, and uh, I'll just watch a little bit of this one. So, you see what that has to offer. Check him out if you want to. Pretty good author, Medicine Man. All right, have a good night.